What would the source port be for source IP 192.168.10.10? If your answer is, I have no idea, then great answer. It's a tough one, unless you are specifically studying networking. Because you see, there are predetermined range of ports that source ports can have. They range from 49152 to 65535 and are known as private ports. They're for a private network. If you ever look at network traffic on a packet capture utility and you look at the source IP address, you will see that the source port will always be something in the range of those numbers. Your computer, when initiating a network connection, randomly selects these ports from your computer using a random number generator. What about the destination IP address of 66.249.64.44? What is the destination port for this? Well, where is it going to? It's going to Google's web server, right? To www.google.com? And what do we use to connect to www.google.com? HTTP, right? Or the more secure version of it, HTTPS. So what is our destination port going to be? 443, the port number for the secure version of HTTP. Yes, all those port numbers you're memorizing for various security or IT exams, this is the reason. If traffic is going to a web server, the port is going to be either 80 or 443. You better hope it's 443, don't let it be 80. If traffic is destined to go to a mail server, the destination port is going to be what? 25. If traffic is going to SSH to another Linux server, the port is going to be what? Right, 22. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, if you're trying to remote desktop RDP to a Windows computer, what's the destination port going to be? 3389. In this sense, if you are a junior network security administrator on your job and you see a packet capture where the destination port is 25, you know it's email traffic, and you can troubleshoot in that regard when things don't work. If you see a destination port of 20 or 21, you know it's FTP, File Transfer Protocol, and you can troubleshoot it that way. Like, without e anyone even telling you, if you see the port 25, you can call the client and say, oh, I see you're having email problems. They'll be like, how did you know? You're like, because I'm a really good network engineer. You don't have to tell them because you saw port 25 in the packet capture. It can be like, oh, I see you guys are having file transfer uh, issues. Can I help? They'll be like, how did you know that? You don't have to tell them you saw ports 20 and 21. They'll be like, I am a dedicated, proactive security professional, and it is my job to know that, sir or madam. <laughs> You're also not going to troubleshoot email traffic the same way as FTP traffic. You have to learn the different methods of configuration and troubleshooting network traffic for different protocols. Hey, you, you awake? Wake up. This is important. Don't ignore this. Don't think you can just Google things in your job as a person who calls themselves a security professional. Yeah, I'm talking to you right now. You're, like, you're kind of dozing off. What I'm trying to do here to talk about is talk about my real life experience. And no customer wants to hear any excuses when their systems are down that you need time to Google things. No. You better know and have an answer instantly for simple stuff like this when you're on a call with other network engineers on a global conference call. People are going to be awake at night in different time zones and agitated and don't have time for you to get your together. Pay attention. Don't phase out on me here. This is important. This, 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 this Sonic project, you, you understand what I'm trying to do, right? My vision is to create a stronger cybersecurity workforce by the time I retire. I got about 20 more years, maybe 15, if I, if I do it right. It's not going to take one year or five years or 10 years to get a strong cybersecurity workforce in the United States and the world. It's going to take teaching an entire generation how to approach cybersecurity and the importance of it. There's no room for laziness and there's no room for anyone who can't handle it. There's no work-life balance at the beginning. Right, when you start this thing, there's no work-life balance. Don't seek that out right away. It's not a good look either. That happens after years of being in the game. I finally now, now I have work-life balance after eight years. Don't kid yourself. Nobody's looking to give a junior or someone fresh to the security industry any kind of leniency unless they're legally compelled to do so. And you can whine and cry to your manager and get it that way, but you know people are going to look at it differently. 
I'm trying to prepare you for this reality. Because nobody did it for me. I had to learn the hard way. Staying late at work. The staying late at work way. The being yelled at by customers and my boss way. The coming home and taking out my frustrations on my family way. I don't want that for you. Your buddy Luca Med is trying to look out for you and your well-being. Because if you're a good security professional, we all win. All right, we all win.